Luca, thank you very much for, for the introduction. Uh, as uh, Luca said, uh, I will try to set the stage uh, for our discussion of uh, national security strategy uh, development uh, by looking at the rationale. Uh, why is it uh, that countries uh, undertake this very difficult and yet incredibly important process of putting together a national security strategy? Well, there, there, there are several uh, rationales, really. Uh, and for me, first and foremost, uh, countries undertake this process uh, to break with the past. Uh, break with the past for a number of reasons. Usually it's because the security environment itself has changed. Uh, and that change in the security environment forces the country, or at least prompts the country, to reassess. Prompts the country to reassess its threats. What are the threats that I face internally? What are the threats I face internally at, at its very dimensions? Uh, it could be uh, a military threat. It could be an insurgency. It could be an economic threat. It could be, it could be any threat. Uh, a country will say, OK, to address this threat, because of the changed security environment, I need to put together a strategy. Oftentimes, is the challenges, the challenges a country faces uh, become bigger and bigger. Uh, and a country must face these challenges and must face these challenges in a coherent, effective way. And one of the ways to do this uh, is to put together a strategy to address uh, the challenges. But it's not just threats and challenges. It's not just threats and challenges. Oftentimes, it's the opportunities. The countries happen upon opportunities. They want to take advantage of certain opportunities. Or they want to focus on some opportunities as ways to develop, as ways to enhance uh, their security. So, countries will need to put together a process to develop a national security strategy that will enable them to, um, to seize uh, those opportunities. The changed security environment can also be associated with changed resources. Now, uh, in many of our countries, uh, of course, resources are always limited. But look, for example, at how the demographic dimension uh, is putting pressure on the availability of resources. Population growth all across the continent, you know, the, the, the trend is this way. The resource availability is, you know, pretty much stable. That equation forces countries to reevaluate their strategies. Because in 10 years, they will have a lot more mouths to feed. They will have to generate a tremendous more uh, number of, of uh, uh, places of employment, and so on and so forth. So that changes the equation. That changes the security environment. And countries must respond. And countries do respond. Uh, by putting together uh, national uh, security uh, strategies. Oftentimes, uh, the break with the past comes in forms of uh, a constitutional change. Constitutional change. Uh, my brother from Liberia asked a question that pertained to the Constitution. Uh, in our countries uh, throughout Africa, oftentimes there's a change in the Constitution. Uh, and that will precipitate other types of reforms. Uh, and uh, oftentimes, uh, constitutional reforms are a clean break with the past, uh, and they trigger the development of a national uh, security strategy. 
Unfortunately, uh, the continent has seen uh, many conflicts uh, throughout its post-independence uh, period. Many of these conflicts terminate with a peace agreement. And that peace agreement often prompts the country to undertake the process of putting together a national security strategy uh, that would entail security sector reform and all of the other reforms that the country feels it needs to have sustainable peace, to have uh, enduring peace. So uh, these are, are important elements uh, when we talk about the break uh, with the past. But sometimes it has to do with an internal assessment of the security, uh, both in terms of the demand, the citizens' demand for security. Uh, we know on the continent, citizens are becoming increasingly vocal about security. And it's because the definition of security has expanded. Citizens now in Africa understand that when we are talking about security, we are not just talking about state security. We are not just talking about regime security. We're not just talking about one person's security who happens to be the head of the regime. We are talking about a broad, much broad, encompassing, inclusive definition of security. So if the citizens, or when the citizens understand that, or as the citizens understand that, they demand it. They go, I want more security. I want more security defined in terms of citizen-centric, human-centric security. So that is an important incentive. That's an important rationale uh, for the development of national security strategies, higher demand for uh, security. But there's also a qualitative aspect to this. There's a qualitative aspect to this in terms of, well, how do we deliver security? In our countries, sometimes we deliver security through the barrel of a gun. Or we think we deliver on security. Sometimes we deliver security in forms that are, well, a bit forceful. But oftentimes, citizens demand better. Because of the definition of the redefinition of, the, uh, of security, uh, citizens want to see the uniformed uh, person as a servant as a public servant who happens to be wearing a uniform. It's a different type of security that you are delivering if you see yourself as a civil servant. You're there to serve. You're not there to uh, intimidate. You're not there to, um, to coerce. So the idea of how to increase the citizen's confidence in the security sector. When we approach the citizen, how does the citizen respond? Does he come toward you or does he run away from you? If the citizen is running away from you, you know you're not delivering the kind of security that he or she expects. So that goes to the qualitative aspect of enhancing uh, security. Of course, there's the need to provide both political and strategic guidance. The country has a vision, and that vision is articulated by the leadership. Oftentimes, uh, countries will capture that vision, will articulate articulate that vision uh, in a strategy so that those who are executing the vision have something clear in front of them to follow. When in doubt, check what's written. Check 
what is in a strategy. So, how to achieve the vision, how to implement the policy. Oftentimes, uh, that is uh, what prompts, what guides uh, a, the development of a strategy. The issue of resources, we keep coming to it uh, because, uh, and, and, and as Dr. Mariano, I'm sure he's going to be uh, talking about, uh, there's the ends, ways, and means um, framework is very, very relevant. You cannot talk about strategy with, with, without touching on the resource issue. Because somehow you are going to have to implement the strategy. If you write a document, however beautiful it is, however comprehensive it is, if it's not implemented, well, what's the use? What's the point? So you need to implement it. And if you're going to implement it, you need to allocate resources, and you need to utilize the resources efficiently. Basically, what I'm saying is, to the best of one's abilities, avoiding waste, avoiding waste should be an important guiding principle. Uh, the issue in Africa, when we talk about resources, is not so much that resources are not available. No, the resources are there. In Africa, the resources are there. And I can quote you figure after figure to make my point. The resources are there. How are those resources utilized? Now, that is the question. How are those resources utilized? What's the, what's the percentage of the resources that leak out of the bucket? That is a question. So uh, having a document that guides us in how we utilize resources uh, is absolutely uh, critical. Uh, the the other, and I'm going to end on this, do not forget the external dimension of the work you do. Because at the end of the day, your national security strategy will be read by your friends and a lot of your adversaries as well. This is just the reality. Uh, so there's that external dimension. Uh, a national security strategy, and again, as my brother from Liberia was saying, there's, there's that connection between the, the, the internal and the external, uh, between the, the national and the regional and the international. Uh, so the national security strategy should also speak to regional stability. Hmm? A national security strategy should also speak to uh, global security as my brother from Morocco uh, said very well. But, and, and I want to end on this, the business community also pays attention. But, because you're signaling to the business community that my primary concern is to achieve security in my country. And there's nothing that investment loves more than stability. And there's nothing that investment abhors more than instability. So, and this comes back to the connection with development. Security, growth, development. It's all connected. So a good national security strategy should also uh, touch on that, should reflect on this. In fact, should be prompted by some of these concerns. Look, I'm going to end here, and hopefully there will be some some opportunities for me to engage in Q&A. Thank you.